We are back, the headless YouTuber and her trusty pug, Pudge, who is fast asleep on my arm. I did not force him to do this. Um, I can prove to you that he wants to be on my lap. I will try to get him off. Okay, Pudge, it's, you gotta go back now. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. I love you so much. Okay, sit down. Today is going to be a pretty hectic day. Actually, the next few days are going to be very hectic. Just to update you in real time, it's Wednesday today and I leave for California on Saturday. So I have so, 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 so many things to do before I leave. I am super behind. I thought that I sort of planned everything really well, but it turns out I didn't. Um, but the purpose of today's video is basically just going to show you how I'm going to sort of arrange my plants in the apartment in a way that is going to allow them to have the best environmental conditions while I'm away um, to make it easier for my friends Nick and Alice to do watering and plant care while I'm away as well. And um, the apartment is going to look nuts for a few days. I'm literally going to be moving everything basically into this room mm -hmm. and we're gonna be living like this for the next few days but the reason I have to do it today is because I just I won't have time to film basically any time after today and I know my husband is not gonna mind because he is a great sport and he just understands mm -hmm. that I'm under a lot of stress right now I'm going to essentially show you um, how I move things around in my plant room I do have plants with pests right now that I need to isolate so I'm going to create sort of an isolation chamber um, somewhere somehow I don't know uh, I need to get all of the plants sort of into the same area big and small I don't want them to have to go around my apartment and get on ladders and do that kind of stuff I just I want it to be as easy as possible uh, and yeah that's about it so let's just get started I guess I uh, I have a lot to do today it's already noon and daylight's burning. Right, Pudge? Seize the day. Let's get up and do stuff. Let's stop sleeping now. I think the first place we're gonna start is in the plant room and the last place we will end up is here back in this living room. So I'll meet you in the plant room. my plant room um, so I've already started this a few days ago um, the goal is to get the rest of these plants into this big exo so that I can have as much humidity in here as possible um, but the exo is already rigged to kind of sustain itself for a long period of time I think that my plan is going to be to move all of my anthuriums into here um, that are currently in my mills bow and then make the bottom exo um or clear this bottom exo for wait what am i doing oh <laughs> clear the bottom exo for plants on my shelf that need more humidity and then i think this is going to maybe be my new thrips quarantine chamber or um maybe my bathroom will be the thrips quarantine chamber it's just easier if everything's in here but i just don't know how things are going to fit yet so that's going to be the plan um, I just don't know if I can fit everything because it's already pretty jam-packed in here. But I'm gonna try. My exo door is still very broken, so we have to be very careful. For that to not happen. Oh, come on. Oh no, this is not the right time for this door to give out. off frick well that's not good i think i need another oh, uh -oh. i am so clumsy i'm gonna just add more hooks on this grid wall because it keeps falling and the last thing i need is a grid wall that's fallen while i'm away 
gonna miss this little guy, but it's going to my mom. Farewell, friend. I'm trying to determine whether I missed any plants that are going to my mom and there are fungus gnats in here, so I'm gonna do a mosquito dunk spray before I go and I'll show you how I do that. If I can remember to do it, that is. Who is going to mom? I actually think these are all mine. Jeez, I have a lot of plants. Wait, oh, this one is gonna go to my mom actually back here. Oh, I hope these plants do well being outside of the XO for a few days. Cause like I said, it's only Wednesday and I don't leave till Saturday and I actually don't get to my mom's house until Monday. So these guys, <laughs> I am, I am legitimately worried, but you know, I'm only going to worry about things that I can control and I cannot control this. I'm gonna move mine into here and gosh, I have too many plants, too many plants. These two burly Marxes are going to California. One is for my mom and one is for my sister. Oh, frick. Um, hmm. Where am I gonna put this one? Oh, no, no. I literally have no space to do anything. You'll have to go here. Um, let's do this up here. My variegated heteracium var oxycardium had to be chopped because it was giving me all green leaves and I chopped it and it's activated. So I'm excited to see what it looks like when I get back. Hopefully we have some variegation, but I'm not super hopeful. I have never seen this EXO so packed before. This is wild. I have too many plants. This is... Okay, not ideal, but I think it's gonna fit. This XO is wild. It's, this is as many as I can fit in there. Sorry, the lighting is terrible, but uh, yeah. Now to fill up this XO, ugh, honestly, I don't really care about this plant too much. I'm going to grab some plants from my shelf and bring them in here and I'll be right back. Some of the plants that I definitely want to get into a greenhouse is this Anthurium forgetii that has been transitioning to lower humidity. So now we're kind of going backwards, but it's okay because I can always redo the acclimation process when I get home. I would much rather it be in um, better condition while I'm away than worry about transitioning again. And then the other one that I want to put in is this Philodendron gloriosum, and I forgot which video I told you that these leaves were gonna go, but I was pretty much right on time with my uh, prediction. So those two leaves will be crispy when I'm home, but it's okay, it's growing, it's healthy. I'm not super worried. Oh, this hay, get out of here. I'm going to try. Look at this Anthurium batarfolium that I didn't even know I propagated. It's just, it's growing so fast. The first two leaves were really fat and cute. And then this one looks like a vitarifolium leaf. And it's got another one on the way and this one hasn't even hardened off yet. It's going crazy. That is not ideal, but it doesn't need to look pretty while I'm gone. The next one that I want to put in there is this Philodendron SP Columbia. Again, another plant I was transitioning down to lower humidity, but I'm just gonna start over. Yeah. Okay, no, I don't like this. It's awkward because these plants are so big and they should not be in this tiny little thing, but we're gonna make it work. Um, I wanna get this higher, but I don't want it to get bleached. 
Okay, let's think about this. Let's go like this. Because you want them all to fit, but you also want to keep in mind the plants that burn easily and the Philodendron SP Columbia is definitely one of those plants. This Gloriosum can tolerate a bit higher light. So I'm gonna just get that one on top. And then, and this is where, oh, let's not do that. This is where the Anthurium vitarfolium will live. Hopefully happily. And then, okay. Anthurium vitarfolium is in. Another one I wanna put in there is this Anthurium crystallinum black. And if you guys remember this from my, uh, gosh, I don't remember which video it was, but I, I showed some of my sad plants and that one, or this one was one of them. But it is on the up and up and it, def and it has a new leaf, although it has a bit of a tear in it. I'm not too worried about that. I am just happy it's alive. Remember guys, I'm not trying to make this pretty. I'm trying to make it functional. Um, okay, so those are in. What else do I wanna put in here? I think I'm gonna move my beloved Anthurium Dark Phoenix in here. Look at this new leaf. Oh my gosh, it's big. I mean, in comparison to the other ones, like this was the first leaf, second leaf, third. Oh yeah. I'm gonna put my Anthurium Marroquiana in here. I think I'm pretty happy with how it is for now. I can still fit more in here, but I'm gonna wait and see how everything else turns out. And then I'll double back. Okay, so I'm out here because I'm doing laundry and the audio is just super loud. So I'm just going to take a little detour and start on the plants that are in my living room. The plan, sorry for the bad lighting. The plan is gonna to need to shift this whole table towards this window. And um, hopefully I don't need anything out there. What do I wanna do? What do I wanna do? Okay, okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna shift this table this way and I'm gonna move pretty much like 90% of my plants on my shelf to here so that they're closer to um, natural light and they're just all in one place for watering. It's kind of hard to water the shelf, it's a pain in the butt, so I don't want Nick and Alice to have to deal with that. Um, this might seem a little bit odd, but I'm going to put a light panel underneath the table shining this way and then I'm going to add some plants underneath the table and then this will keep the top of the table toasty um, just to kind of keep up that heat because it does get really cold in here. So, yeah. This says permanent mounting tape, which makes me a little nervous, but I'm going to do it anyway because I make bad decisions. Here is our situation. The table is moved super close to the window, but not directly next to it because it does get really cold. I have a grow light under here. I'm gonna add some plants down here, add plants on top, and hopefully this light gets the glass nice and toasty. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'm gonna start moving all of these plants now 
over this way. I forgot to mention this while I was recording, but something I would recommend is actually setting up your vacation setup a few days before you're scheduled to leave. I know that not everybody has this luxury, um, like if you have kids or something, but if you can do it, I just find that it brings me way more peace of mind knowing that I was able to observe the conditions before I left, make any adjustments, move things around, and just overall get them in the best spot possible for the time that I'm gone. You guys, look how cool this is. I just mentioned in another video that this plant would probably never bloom because it's living in swamp water right now. It's been living in swamp water for a long time. But look at this. I'm sad that I'm probably gonna miss it if it does manage to bloom, but I'm pretty surprised that it was this cutting of all of them that decided to push out. Um, a flower because my other one is in much better conditions. It's actually in soil. I'm fertilizing, but <laughs> telling you, this one's like water, no problem. Don't mind the messy house. It is chaos here, seriously. Okay, so I've decided to have some trailing plants here on the shelf because I was running out of space on my table. Um, let me take you over. <laughs> I did a lot of stuff while my camera was charging and it wasn't interesting anyway, but I will give you a peek. This is what the living room currently looks like. It is wild. So I have the table. This is how far, ow. <laughs> So this is how far the table is from the window. Um, I have bigger plants up here in the back that I've moved from all over the apartment. Let me try and squeeze around here. So these guys should be getting pretty good light while I'm away. And I'm going to just give this table a feel. And it's actually pretty warm. So I am happy with this so far. Down here, I have two 20 watt panels and I've got some smaller ones down here. And this might not be an ideal like watering situation, but honestly, it's the best I could do. And it's much easier than trying to water things on that shelf, I promise you. I'm going to leave this where it is. And I have some of my trailing plants here and then this Mayoi that I don't want to move because it's actually attached to my shelf now. Um, so the kitchen is empty, the bedroom's empty. I am not, I refuse to show you my bedroom. It is so messy. Um, oh, uh, I moved my rubber tree that was in my bedroom over here. Both of my Wally Grow planters are right in a window. And um, if we come around this way, my fiddle is here, that was in my bedroom. My Ripsalis alicornioides is here, and then my, oh, my elbow back here. So this is a south-facing window. I'm hoping that it's not gonna get too hot, but I think the forecast 
So it's pretty much rain the entire time that we're gone. Um, so not super worried about that. Um, basically, everything that needs to be watered will be in this general area so they're not having to like go through rooms and then in the plant room. So that's the plan for the living room. It is a war zone in here. So the plants in this corner are going to California. Um, this big XO is pretty much loaded up as much as it possibly can be. This one can fit a little bit more. I'm just not sure what I want to put in there. I was thinking of maybe trying to squeeze the rest of the anthuriums into there if I can because I think I'm gonna make this my new thrips isolation uh, chamber because my Xanadu has thrips. I found thrips on three other plants and they're adult thrips too, so I don't want those guys flying around the apartment while I'm away. Um, these plants also had thrips before, so they've, they've actually been in there for a while. So I think I'm gonna leave that the way it is. I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen with my tent yet. It does get really hot in there, so I'm kind of hesitant to leave plants in there while I'm away, because I do have to sort of monitor it pretty often. So I guess right now I'm gonna see how much more of this I can squeeze into here. are so, ugh, they're just so inconvenient to have right before a trip. Like this is not what I needed. And then I have this one that was exposed to thrips. This Campos Pardoenum. It was exposed to thrips. I haven't actually seen thrips on it, but we're just gonna act like it's infested. I didn't find thrips on this Mexicanum or this Dark Lord, but it was right next to this plant that had adult thrips. So again, we are going to treat it like it has thrips. And I will do one last thrips treatment on these plants before I go as well. Thrips quarantine chamber is done. I'm just gonna have to make sure to label it so that Nick and Alice know what this is. Not the best angle, but we are here at my Redsta in the background making demonic noises. <laughs> okay, so we are in my bedroom at my red stick cabinet. Pudge, please don't move my tripod, babe. No, don't, 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 don't. Um, as you can see, the lighting situation here, it's uh, sketchy to say the least. So I finally got some proper tape. So I'm gonna get this fixed up because this thing falls like five million times a day. Oh, that's hot still. I just need to fix it because this is way overdue. I do not recommend being lazy like me. This is just way messier than it needed to be. Okay. Slide this thing on properly. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm like trying to finish as fast as possible because I actually found a good, well it seems like a good movie so far on Crave and it's called Come Play and it 
has one of my favorite actresses in it and I wanna finish it, but I need to do this while it's still daylight. I hope that this double-sided tape is strong enough for uh, this light. Oh my gosh, look at my fat. <laughs> All right, let's put this one. Please stay. Next one. Oh, I forgot this one is all set, but you know what? If I'm gonna do it, I might as well just do it right. That sucks. Damn it. Let's try and take off as much of this tape. This is not ideal. And there goes my manicure. <laughs> Guys, I love this color so much. This is the OPI um, Envy the Adventure. But, oh, I'm, I'm gonna call you out, OPI. Your formula sucks ass. It lasts the least out of all of the polishes I've ever used, ever. And it's almost like they want you to keep doing your manicure so that you keep buying bottles and you go through them really fast. Which I guess is a good strategy, but it makes me not want to buy that uh, nail polish. I could run down to Nick's house and grab the Goo Gone, but that's so much work <laughs> to go all the way downstairs. Tell me you're lazy without telling me you're lazy. I went downstairs and I got the goo gone, so I'm gonna try and remove all of this residue on here. Much better. Okay, so the reason that I actually moved this light up um, rather than keeping it towards the back is because with this sort of like shade thing now, when it's moved back, these plants in the front don't get enough light. So now this is perfect. Um, and the reason that I have these on is because this is in our bedroom. Our um, bed is right behind the camera and it blinds us in bed if there's no, um, if there's no cover. So what I'm actually gonna do is move some succulents up here temporarily. 
uh, just because it's closer to the light. And honestly, I rarely water these, so I'm just going to water them when I leave and then not have Alice or Nick worry about it. I basically just don't want them to uh, go into my bedroom because it's really messy in here. This plant is not doing well. This ficus triangularis. I don't know what it is. It. I thought it might be thrips, but I don't see any. It's just not happy. This is the situation in the grow tent, but I'm realizing now that I actually need to pull all of my mom's plants out first to see what are actually mine. So um, <laughs> that's actually a separate video. So I'm gonna film that and then I will come jump back in this video when everything is empty. The tent is so much emptier than it was before. These are actually all of my plants now besides this one that I'm trying to see if I'm allowed to take this over the border. I think there are certain uh, ficus uh, species that you're not allowed to take. So I need to do a little bit more research. I am not willing to um, sacrifice the plants that I'm bringing all for the sake of an empty tree. So anyway, I decided to put the anthuriums on this shelf because it's going to be mostly shaded from this light and I don't want them to get a ton of light. So back there is perfect. I've put a tray here so that nothing drips onto this grow light. I've got some props and rehabs in here, all of my props in here. And I mean, it's pretty much good to go. Um, I have my sprayer right here and Nick and Alice can just go to town spraying and I think it's going to be, uh, I think these are going to be just fine. The only thing that I've really adjusted in here is um, the grow light times. So usually I have the whole plant room on from 8.30 in the morning until 8.30 at night and then 10.30 on the weekends since I'm usually in here pretty late. But I've adjusted them to turn on at 8.30 and then turn off at 6.30 so that um, the amount of warmth in here is not as prolonged during the day and things won't dry up too fast. But it'll still be getting enough light that they'll be able to photosynthesize and grow and uh, kind of take care of themselves. So 
If I could make any recommendation on how to prevent your plants from drying out too fast that are in greenhouses is to turn down the, uh, or to limit the time that the grow lights are on. All right, this is the final walkthrough of the plant room before I am officially clocking out. I am exhausted. So in this exo here, we have a lot of my anthuriums and some of the plants that were on my plant shelf um, that I was acclimating down that are now gonna be um, babied again, but that's okay. Um, this XO is filled to the brim. I cannot fit a single plant in here, um, but I think that the addition of all the other plants is going to keep up that humidity and uh, I think they're gonna do fine. Down here in the mills, but I'm not gonna open it, is the Thrips Jail. I just need to write a little note for Alice and Nick to um, make sure to keep this closed and only uh, open it when they need a water. I need to write a note here saying, do not open this door unless you want it to topple on you. <laughs> Sorry for the really weird and abrupt transition. Uh, just to update you, I'm actually back from my trip already and I haven't filmed in like four weeks. I'm a little bit rusty and I'm editing this video and I realized that the day that I was filming before, um, my camera died and I was charging it and I said that I was going to wrap up the video and then I never did left for California and now we're here. So instead of my original plan, I thought that I would do something I forgot to put my phone on silent. I thought I would do something that I have, I don't think I've ever done it on this channel before, but I mentioned a few plants throughout this video and I'm gonna do an update on them in the same video, which I think is exciting. You might not think it's exciting, but I feel like it's exciting. Um, mostly because I'm kind of excited about uh, some of the things I'm gonna show you. So uh, let me just go grab those really quick. Again, my battery is on its last leg. I have not touched this camera in so long, but uh, we're doing it, we're gonna do it. Hold on, buddy. Okay, give me one second, okay? Give me one second. I guess before I start the updates, um, I should tell you that the setup that I had was perfect. Um, not many casualties at all. I will say that my fiddle leaf died. I don't know what happened. All the leaves just like turned black. I didn't even bother with it. I just chopped it up and um, threw it out. And then one of my deschidias died. It was like that deschidia watermelon thing. Um, I loved that plant, but I'm, again, I, like out of all of the plants that I have, for those two to die, I, I call that a win. So overall, it was a success, and I think when I leave again in a few weeks, I will do the same exact setup. I mentioned in the video that my variegated heteraceum was pushing out new growth, and um, the new leaf has come out. It's a green leaf. <laughs> Honestly, I think I've just about given up on this plant. I cannot chop it anymore. I've already chopped it as many times as it can be chopped, I think. So I guess I just have another heteraceum, which, which is okay. I'm happy that my friend sent it to me anyway to try out. And um, yeah, maybe one day it'll give me variegation, although I'm really not hopeful at all. I'm gonna need to get my puppy dog off of me for this one because it is a big, exciting one. Okay, you're just gonna go right here, okay? Just go right here, you can go on ghosty. You can go on ghosty this time. Okay, stay. The next one, <laughs> very exciting. So I showed you my Gloriosum that had two leaves that were yellowing and I said that they were gonna be dead by the time I came home and sure enough, they are, but this beautiful leaf unfurled while I was away and I am speechless. It's got the perfect little overlapping lobes that I love so much in philodendrons. This right here, this is my favorite. This little part right here. Whoa, that looks dirty. <laughs> Buddy, hold on. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, it is a beautiful new leaf. It's got a really pink, <laughs> it's got a really pink back. Uh, the only bad news is that we are right up against the edge of the pot now. So I think I'm going to do, I feel like I do so many repot with me videos, but honestly, I just, all of my plants have been growing so fast lately that I just have a lot of repotting to do all the time. But yeah, this thing is huge um, in comparison to like my hand or like pudge, pudge size check. So yeah, I'm really happy about this. Uh, if you're wondering, I just obviously have it in soil. I have a little bit of LECA at the bottom. Um, I am regularly fertilizing this with Marfil, CalMag, and liquid gold leaf. So, so far so good. I am going to try out a different fertilizer on it that I'm experimenting with. I probably won't do an update on that for maybe another like two or three months or sometime in the spring because I do want to like test it out first, try and document the growth and stuff and the differences between using that and my regular fertilization stuff. But anyway, yeah, um, not, not mad about this at all. I'm kind of sad that Vandula is closed for the winter because I wanted to get another one of those crawling pots for it. But that's okay. I'm gonna see if I can find it somewhere else. I think uh, Lauren at North Shore Tropicals carries them too, because um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> because this little pot is not gonna do. Uh, all right, on to the next one. If you remember, I showed. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> In the beginning of the video, I made a reference about, if you know, you know, about Pudge being on my lap. Um, long story short, a someone commented on my page and was making comments about my anxiety, my mental health, saying that I don't handle my dog properly or he or she didn't like the way I held my dog and it seemed like I was forcing him to be on my lap. You guys, this is my dog. He will not leave me alone and I never mistreat him. I never handle him in a way that makes him uncomfortable. If Pudge was scared of me or he didn't like the way I handled him, he would not constantly try to be on me. I promise you, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't force him to do it. We're just best buds. Let me try and do this with him on my lap. I mentioned a vitar folium that was pushing out new growth and that leaf is right here. It was smaller when I left, obviously. Now it's fully hardened off, um, growing a little bit at an angle. I find that Vitara foliums tend to do that sometimes. But now it's pushing out this one, and I just cannot complain with how quickly this thing is growing. Not to mention, it has a secondary growth point popping up at the base. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a, a nice long thing by spring. Um, I am going to try and keep this in my EXO. I did say I wanted to keep at least one uh, vitar vitarfolium in my EXO. It's just that they outgrow it so fast. So we'll see how long I can keep it in there. I just, I really love um, how easy it is to grow out these straps without them getting all like warped and weird. I like how fast it's growing. So yeah, I'm gonna ride that train for as long as I can. Ugh, this puppy. Okay, uh, going back, I quickly sort of showed this Plowmanii on my shelf. That was really sad, it was really droopy, and um, I think it was mostly dry and under-fertilized because I need to also repot this. It is in moss and leca, and this thing dries out super fast. Um, this was the sad droopy leaf. It's not sad and droopy anymore, it's nice and perky and it pushed out this new leaf while I was away. So this thing really, really loved being in my EXO. I don't think that I'm gonna put this back on my shelf for a while. I have it right now in my Millsbow in my plant room. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep it in at least like 60% humidity for a bit, just to kind of let it bounce back because it's always sort of like a one or two leaf plant at all times and I'm not really seeing the size growth that I want. So yeah, time to baby this thing again. And honestly, I'm not like, 
in love with this plant per se. Uh, I did really, really, really love it at one point, but I find that there are certain traits that I look for in philodendrons and sometimes another philodendron will mark off that sort of itch that I have even better than something that I currently have. So right now my philodendron SP Columbia is marking off a lot of things that I love in a philodendron right now. So I'm just really, really loving that. And I used to just uh, drool over this plant on Instagram because I loved this like sunken in venation. I love that it goes all the way to the edge of the leaf blade. I love this pink little sinus. But again, I have a lot of plants that I enjoy more than this one that also mark off the same things and uh yeah so i don't know this one has kind of just fell on the back burner i think that if i just baby it a little bit more and give it a little bit more love i can um sort of i guess rekindle that joy and love that i used to get over this plant in the very beginning when i first got it and i would also like to mention that i don't think that there's anything wrong with falling in and out of love with plants i don't think that like a plant that you are obsessed with and love now you necessarily have to always be um that obsessed over it um i, I don't know that's just my thing i i see a lot of comments on like plant groups where you know they'll make comments about like oh how could you just like stop liking a plant like you must not really like plants and i, I don't know i'm just not into all that Bull crap! I just feel like you know, it it sort of uh, it ebbs and flows. It my friend Erin always she says something I can't remember, but Erin um, is the same way. She will be super into a plant one day, and then the next she's like over it. She wants it gone, and then she's you know ready for the next plant. And if that's just if that's sort of your rhythm with plant parenthood, I say just go with it. You know whatever. Um, all right, so there are one, two, two more leaves, two more leaves, two more plants that I want to show you before we're going to call it a day. And I'm getting nervous because I'm on my last leg of battery. All right, these next two plants, I am super, super excited to show you. Um, let's start with this one. Um, I don't know which video it would have been in where I talked about my crystal black. I know that I mentioned it in like a new leaf video, like growth that I'm excited about right now. And then the next video that I filmed, it quickly went downhill and then I included it in sad plants update. <laughs> so it was kind of a roller coaster. So I don't know if you remember, this is the crystal black that I had. I'm trying to do this without showing you the new growth. So this was the crystal black. Um, it was a lot more bushy than this. Two leaves quickly um, died and these ones have started to yellow, although it has been like this for a long time. And I thought that this one was going to die. I was getting ready to just be back with the stump. Earlier in the video, it was just a tiny little growth and I didn't know that it was going to be as big as it ended up being. But this is the new leaf on it, and it does not look big on camera, but all the three, the three leaves that were previously on it are pretty much the same size, so if you compare it to a leaf like this... Ugh! This is not... I am not doing this well. Okay. So like you can see, all the leaves are in comparison to my hand. It's about the size of my hand. And this one is significantly larger than my hand. But yeah, it's beautiful. And I also mentioned it had a little rip in the new leaf, and that is the rip. But overall, I think that like, I don't know, it was just preparing for this massive new growth that was gonna come out. I did have to sacrifice two leaves for it, but you know, you win some, you lose some. And uh, I think we're winning here. Again, I think I'm going to jinx it, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. The last one that I want to show you is a, a plant that I put in my Mars Hydro tent. If you remember, it is my Anthurium Hoffmanii. And this is the one that I was most nervous about uh, leaving 
when I left. It was one of those plants where like on the long trip, I was thinking about my setup and it was one that I kept going back to like, should I tell Alice to like remove it? I think it's gonna be too hot. I think there's gonna be too much light. It's gonna get bleached. So this is the Hoffmanii that I put in there. And the leaves are about the size of my hand again, maybe a little bit smaller. And this one just came out of nowhere while I was away. I don't even think that I had new growth on it um, when I was getting it all set up. It just shot out and it's huge. It's like nearly double the size of the previous leaves. And I just think it really, really loved the constant warmth in the Mars Hydro tent. I think it liked the kind of light it was getting. It wasn't getting any direct light. It was just getting reflections from those like metallic walls. So I just, I can't even like stress this enough. I know that I'm sponsored by them, but I love my Mars Hydro tent. And honestly, I think that if I ever move into a larger place, which I hope, you know, would happen eventually, I will definitely, definitely be getting a walk-in tent because as much as I love the look of EXOs and I will probably always own EXOs um, in my time of plant parenthood, I think that my preference would be to have all of my plants growing in a grow tent just because, and that is a plain. All that to say, I love my tent. I wish I had a bigger one. Unfortunately, that is the biggest one that I can fit in my plant room. I, I've fiddled with the idea of getting rid of half of my exos and replacing it with a tent, but I just, I don't know. I just don't think that the space that I'm in now is the right time. So I'm just going to make do with what I have and set a goal for myself that in our next place, I hope my plant room is a little bit bigger so that I can fit a walk-in tent because that would make me so happy. I just, I'm really, really happy with the way that this um, is growing, so yeah. Oh, and it's um, in soil. It's probably, it's actually in a really, really dense soil in comparison to um, my other Aeroid mix, but it seems to be doing re really well. There's a lot of roots forming along the edges. Anyway, that is all of the updates. Um, I think we're gonna head out. I am attempting to um, get a second video up this week. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Um, probably not because I am, I feel like I'm still recovering from my trip. Um, I just wanted to like be a couch potato for a whole week after I came back. I guess I will do the goodbyes today. We didn't really see much of Pudge in this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Of course, if you have any questions about traveling um, and getting your plants set up for vacations and stuff, please let me know. I would be happy to answer them. Honestly, I, I'm really, really behind on YouTube comments, but I promise I'm going to get to them. I'm just trying to like get caught up. I have a lot of stuff going on with work, prepping for the trip, and now prepping for another trip. It's just all kind of a mess, but I know that everyone's kind of getting back into traveling and being away, so I would like to be as helpful as I can. I feel like my setup here was pretty successful, but you know, I, I do have pretty ideal conditions, I would say. I know that not everybody, um, you know, we don't all have the same sort of environment in our home. So if there's anything that I can do to help you figure out um, the best way to set up your plants, please let me know. Um, leave any questions in the comments and we're gonna go. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.